Hey, what's up guys? So as you probably know, Apple just had its big WWDC event and they dropped the newest version of iOS 26. And yeah, you heard that right, iOS 26. If you were expecting like iOS 19, you're probably a little confused. But honestly, I think I get it. Apple seems to be jumping the number up to match the 2025-2026 release year. Plus, it kind of lets them use the same number for everything. macOS, watchOS, you name it. So I guess there's no more confusion with all the different version numbers. Now, this update is a big one. It's the first major design change we've seen since iOS 7. Apple is calling it liquid glass, and it's going to be the look for the next decade of iOS. So naturally, I wanted to test it out. I went ahead and installed the iOS 26 developer beta on the spare iPhone 12 mini I have, just so I could share my first thoughts and experiences with you. I'm not going to do a super deep dive into every single setting, but more like, you know, a quick look at the things you and I use every day but first, I gotta give you a warning. This is a very early developer beta, and trust me, it is so buggy right now. It's not stable at all. Just scrolling around, I can see it's kinda choppy and laggy. And man, this thing gets hot. I was just poking around for this review and my phone got super warm and the battery drain, oh my gosh, it's draining so fast. So yeah, there's a good reason I put this on a spare phone. I definitely don't recommend installing this on your main device. All right, without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to notice is, of course, this new liquid glass style. Let me try to show you. Look at the new lock screen here. You see the time? It's got this awesome glassy look and you can still adjust it. And check this out. They have a spatial scene option for photo wallpapers, which gives them this cool 3D look and a little bit of movement. For me, it just looks so much more modern and dynamic. I really like it. Okay, now let's go to the home screen. Look at this. Apple did a huge change to the app icons, and honestly, I like it. I like it a lot. It's so different from iOS 18, and you can see that glassy translucent style on the folders too. It just feels fresh. You're gonna see this liquid glass look everywhere in notifications, control center, all of Apple's apps. It's a whole system-wide thing, but it's not just a pretty face. The whole design has these new, more rounded corners on everything. And when you press things, there are these new menus that can kind of morph and give you more options. It's pretty slick. Now, when you go to edit the home screen, there's a new customization option here called clear. And I'm not gonna lie, for me, it's not really great right now. It basically makes the background of the icons and text disappear, but it makes them really hard to see, like, you know, it's just not readable at all. I really think and hope Apple will fix this in a future update. It happens in the control center too when you swipe down. See, it's glassy, but it feels really raw. But what I do love is the tinted mode. This looks amazing. It's more of that glassy dynamic look and you can actually adjust the color. For me, this is a huge win. It looks great. All right, next up, the camera app. Big update here. You can see the icon is totally new. And when we open it, whoa, it's so much simpler now. Apple really streamlined the layout. You've basically got a toggle for photo and video and all the other modes like portrait and panorama are tucked away in these little menus you can expand. It feels way less cluttered. I think I'm a fan of more simple UI now on iOS 26. And look at this. They also updated the Photos app. They brought back the separate tabs for library and collections, which a lot of people will be happy about. And get this. You can activate spatial scene on any of your images to give them that cool 3D look. Then there's Safari. It has a whole new look too. All the buttons have that rounded liquid glass design and by default, it gets rid of the settings bar at the bottom to give you more screen space. The same thing is happening in Apple Music News and Podcasts. They all have this new tab bar that kind of floats and shrinks when you scroll. It's a small thing, but on a smaller phone like the 12 mini, every bit of space counts. Okay, let's head over to settings. This also has a new layout and here's something interesting. The search bar is now at the bottom, which, you know, makes it way easier to reach. But here's something I found that's a really great feature that my iPhone 12 mini can't even use. In the battery settings, there's a new feature called adaptive power. And this is only for iPhones that support Apple intelligence. So yeah, my phone doesn't get it. This feature is supposed to make these little performance tweaks to help your battery life like lowering the brightness a bit or letting background tasks take a little longer. It's supposed to be a big deal for the new iPhone 17 models, but yeah, it's a bummer. We don't get it on older phones. And hey, you know what's cool? When I plugged it into charge, it actually tells me the estimated time for a full charge. Now, it's kind of new for iPhones, right? 
But I know some of you Android users are probably like, yeah, we've had that for ages. And speaking of Apple intelligence, there's a bunch of other new stuff like smarter visual intelligence, live translation in messages and FaceTime. But again, as I said, it only works on newer iPhones like the 15 Pro and the 16 lineup. So the iPhone 12 can't do that. One new thing we do get is a new Apple Games app. It seems like it's meant to be an all-in-one spot for your games with leaderboards and friend competitions. I haven't really dived into it yet, but it looks promising. All right, so that's a quick look at iOS 26 on this iPhone 12 mini. Just to be clear, iOS 26 is limited to developers right now. A public beta will probably be out in July and the final stable version will launch in September with the new iPhones. It'll run on the iPhone 11 and newer, but unfortunately it dropped support for the iPhone 10R and 10S. And as we've seen, even if your phone supports it, a lot of the best new features will be limited to the absolute newest iPhones. All right, thanks for watching everyone. If you're curious about iOS 26 and want me to show you a specific feature, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to cover it in the next video. Let me know what you guys think of the new look. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.